previous episode, we looked at data tables. And one of the things that we did within this episode is that we created this application data table class. And the application data table class simply had a lot of the common functions that would be found within all of our subclasses. And then another thing that we had was a user data table. And this was a specific for our user model and it inherited from the application data table and it had a bunch of methods as well. However, these methods would basically persist from model to model. And one way we can create a consistency between all the different data table models that we'll be creating is to create our own custom generator. And with this, we'll get a command line interface that we can then use to create new data table models as we need them. And then it'll fill out and have all the basic information that we need so we can get right in there and start creating our new models without having to refer back to our old subclasses to see what we actually were needing to create. So within the root of our application, we'll first start by running Rails generate generator and then data tables. It'll create the lib generators data tables folder. And then it'll also create a couple of different files. One is the data table generators, and this would be the entry point for this generator. It then has this usage, which will be for the help. And then the templates, which is where we would store all the different files that we're going to use to copy over into our main application whenever the generator is ran. So navigating to the lib generators data tables folder, we'll see that we have our three files, the folder templates, data tables generator, and then the usage. And with the usage, we would want to update this to be the accurate description of what the generator does. And with this generator, I want to show you two examples. One is where we will create a data tables generator with the init, and this will create the app services data tables folder, then also within there, our application data table. And then when we pass in a model, whether it's plural or singular, we want it to then also create the data tables folder, then also the application data table, and then the user's data table, which is specific to this model. And so back in our terminal, if we run Rails generate data tables dash dash help, you can see that it'll return with our example where we have our description. And then it also shows the example that we had in the usage documentation. And so then if we also change the name to base to just base, then this won't require a name at first. And then we'll be able to customize our own argument. And in this case, we're going to call it model. So if we go back into our terminal, if we run Rails generate data tables help again, you can see that it now says Rails generate data tables model instead of name. And so one of the neat things that this generator does is that we can create different methods and each one of these public methods would be executed whenever the generator is ran. So if you want a method that does not get run, then you would need to create a private method and have those methods within there. So for our initializer, let's go ahead and create a private method called generate application data table. So creating the private method, we'll create the generate data tables. Then we would have this copy file and then we need a file name. And then we're going to copy this to the app services data tables, then application data table dot RB. And so for this file, we'll just call the data tables template dot RB. And if you find that you're having a trouble with your specs running because of the RB extension, then you are able to call this something else like template. And then it's going to get renamed to application data table dot RB anyways, when the generator is executed. And then for our generate model, we're going to create another private method. We're just going to call this generate model data table. And we would only want to run this if the model name was not in it. We're able to create another private method. And this time we're going to use template because we want to make sure that we are including and parsing the ERB that we are going to be putting in here so we can make it and tailor it to this model name. And so in this case, we're going to have another template file called model data table template dot template. And when we copy this, we're going to copy it to the app services data tables. And then we're going to have the model dot underscore underscore data table dot RB. And so next under our templates folder, we need to create a new file and we're just going to call this the data table template dot template. And then within here, I'll just paste in the source code that we had from our episode 82 on the data tables with the application data table. And then next under the templates folder again, we want to create another file. And this time we're going to call it the model data table template dot template. 
And so this is where things get a little bit more complicated because we can't just call class and then assume that our users data table and then inherit from the application data table. We're not going to be able to do this because this class users is going to be dependent on whatever we passed in from our model in the argument. So instead we can use some ERB tags and have something like the model singularize camel case and then data table. And again, just make sure that you're consistent with the class naming here as you are when you're copying over the file. And in our case, I didn't singularize the model, so we would just leave it as it was entered in from the argument. Next, we had a delegate, and this was to the edit user path. And again, in this case, we want to change this user, and then we're just going to call this the model.singularize. And then we also want to downcase this, and then we can create our private method data, and then we can just basically paste in all the stuff that we had. However, you see that here we will need to uh, adjust some of the things. And one of the things that you're not gonna be able to do is anticipate the number of columns. So here in this case, I would just put something in here, and then I would rely on the user to fill this information out. So updating this user's map, it may look something like this, where you have your model down case pluralize map, and then we pass in our pipes, and then with the singular model. And again, we may want to down case this just in case of the user entered a uppercase in the model name when they were running the generator. And so something else that you may want to do in these scenarios is you may want to create some documentation. So whenever the generator is ran, it'll basically have this documentation in that new file that they created, and this could be very helpful. However, the user may not always want the documentation because they find that they have to go through and clean it up themselves. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a optional parameter to where they can override and not create any kind of documentation. And so within our data tables file, I'm going to create a class option, and this is going to just be called doc. It's a Boolean type. It defaults to true, and then it has a description include documentation. And so when we run our help again, you can see that now it has a additional option, and it has doc, which is by default, or you can pass in dash dash no doc, and that would exclude the documentation from being created. So back within our model template, we can create a if options doc, and notice that I have these dashes on the beginning and ending of the ERB tag. Now I do that because I don't want this logic to affect the spacing. If we were not to include those dashes when we first create and then end it, then we would have additional spaces in here. So let's go ahead and run our data table to see what we get at this point. So I'm going to just run the Rails generate data tables users, and then you'll see that it created our two files under the services data tables folder. If we go to our app services data tables, if we look at our application data table, you'll see that it just copied out that file exactly. However, notice our users data table, the template was renamed. And if we look at this, it's already filled out a lot of this information as well as our private method information. So we're off to a great start here. So off camera, I went ahead and create the rest of the methods. If you remember, we had our count, and then this was just the singular model dot count. And then we had our total entries. And again, this was just a total count. And then we had some funny ones where the method name was a variant of the model. In this case, it was just a down case underscore. And similar for the fetch users, we take in our model name, down case it, and then underscore it. And so again, it's probably important to include the documentation for each one of these so the user can see what's required from this model. And in some of these cases, it should be fairly self-explanatory what's going on. But then you get into something like this columns method, which you may not remember when you go from model to model what it's actually doing. So it'd be good to put in some documentation in there. And so again, we can run our Rails generate data tables users, but this time I'm gonna pass the option force, so I'll overwrite what we already had. So looking at the users data table file now, you can see that this is pretty complete. So if I needed to create a data table for this user, then it would be very quick for me to just come in, fill in the columns that I want to have displayed on the table, and then just fill out the columns down here and I really wouldn't have to change anything else. So again, this kind of prototyping and generating the file is gonna be a great way to be consistent between each one of the models that we're generating for. 
And then we can also run one for the products that we might have for a company. And then you'll see that I created the products data table. When we come in here, you can see that it's already set everything up for us. So we would have to do very little, just creating our columns and then creating our list of columns that this product would have. And so we've kept everything really consistent and it didn't take us any time to create all of this. So it's very powerful in what you can do. And so definitely check the documentation because there's some really good hints. So for example, following the escaped ERB tag, you would need to have within the template the extra percent sign. So this within your template would actually generate the include style sheet. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.